back, man. Steve, 38. We had to skip the week. We did. Uh, how you been, man? Good. Good. Plodding along. Can't complain. What about you? Yeah, not too bad. Same old, same old. And we got Anthony Frangi back with us. Hello, hey, guys. Anthony. Yeah. We're kind of scraping the barrel for guests now. Oh, so <laughs> we just found him loitering <laughs> across the road. <laughs> he was hanging out in the factory, so we thought I'd jump on the pod. Why not? Good man, to be back. Good start to the season for you, man. It's been all right. It's been all right. Yeah, two, was it two goals of the week? Yeah, it was two. two. And were you four and three? Yes, four and three. How's it been? How are you feeling? You feeling feeling good, feeling fit, but uh, it's on hold now, so yeah. So he's going to keep practicing? Hopefully. Mate, there, there are some goals I saw you practice in the factory you scored. Yeah, Stevie was uh, showing me how to do it, so I thought I'd take it out on the weekend. Yeah, it was About good. time. <laughs> About time. Yeah, so, so far, good start. It's a shame you're going to be on a break. It's all right. But a little holiday. You just got to keep training through it, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Stevie, another big week as well. It's the W League Grand Final. It is. It's it's exciting. You've been tr- working with a lot of the, especially the foreign girls. From Sydney, um, yeah. Yeah, for most of the season, so... Mm-hmm. This could be your back-to-back title if they win. <laughs> if they win, I want a medal. Yeah, I think you, I think you deserve the medal, man. If they win, but no, nah, it's been good. Obviously, last yesterday was our last session with them, um, so it comes with the territory. Kind of, it's always sad to see people go. Um, but yeah, got to know them very well. So we're doing between one to three sessions per week since I can't even remember how far back. Pretty much since the start. Yeah, yeah we were still in Caitlin. That was still here. Um, so yeah, it's been really, really good. Uh, it's going to be a tough game, City are quality, but anything can happen in the final. So I'm hoping that the girls can get over the line and get the win. Do you think they should be able to win? or? I think, think it's possible. I think they've got the players. I think there's external things that are out of their control, which makes it harder for them to perform on the field. Um, but there's enough quality there, and if they can get the get the bounce on the day, then you never know. Well, that's it, isn't it? It's just luck of the ball. Yeah. Um, give us a score prediction. 1-0, Sydney. 1 0 Sydney. Uh-uh. Who's going to score it? Or 4 1 City. One of the two. <laughs> <laughs> Who's going to score the goal? Um, I don't know. Probably V. Or Sof could pull up, pull up a banger. She did last year in the grand final. Yeah, she did too. Um, but yeah, it's, it's big players. So obviously, a lot of the boys have trained with the girls as well once they've been in. Um, yeah. He actually yeah, trains. He actually trains properly when the girls are in. Have to uh, try, he has trying to impress. Yeah. <laughs> trying to impress. Um, exactly. But nah, some big players, obviously. So Aubrey. Um, goalkeeper of the year yeah. last year in the in the NWSL so working with her a lot on just trying to get more distance on a strike and just little things so standing foot's just too far in front of the ball so just working on trying to bring that back slightly behind the ball um, and then with the other ones it's more general general sessions but also just refining the technique so a lot of it's got to do with the finishing um, but yeah big players so it's been in the US national team it's obviously the world champions um, and then Lindsay's in the Canadian. Canadian national team yeah. um, been to World Cup so big players to work with but you wouldn't know they were at that level very humble very hard working um, very nice girls so like I said it's been a pleasure and it's gonna, we're going to miss them it'll be sad to see them go and for those who don't know they've all been on the podcast so you they have all been on the them. podcast to so go check out the earlier episodes and hear about their journeys yeah so Steve at the moment you're doing um like f- complete technical assessments on players mm-hmm. so how does that work uh, so it's something new that we've introduced. So obviously with the, the, the amount of players that we work with in here, I don't get the chance to work with everybody. Um, and I predominantly work with the older ones or, or the more supposed elite players. Um, so that's usually where I find myself. So this gives access to me, to everybody. Um, but it also, it's just important just to highlight the, the deficiencies in the technique. So we take them through an hour session. We go through set. I go, I go through a set pattern of drills that we work at. So we're looking at the first touch, passing, striking, dribbling, which, which isn't revolutionary, but it's going into details with all of those things. So it's highlighting strengths within those four categories, but also highlighting deficiencies, which is the main part of it. Um, so you have so we work with players from, I think the nine is the youngest that we've done, and all the way through to adults. Um, and it's just, just providing with those feedback about what's missing, so what, what's deficient, and then what they need to be doing to try to address those deficiencies. But the first part, like, and why these things are so valuable is giving that knowledge and giving them the understanding. Like, if I have parts of my game that I don't know that I'm not good at, like, how am I going to fix them? You yeah. know what I mean? And that's been a lot, a lot of the feedback that the parents have been giving that, that's that been very, very beneficial for them that they haven't known. Um, so it varies into, obviously, the, the, the amount of um, areas that are wrong. So you could have somebody in, like, all four 
uh, components, they all got massive problems with all of them. So then it obviously becomes a bigger analysis. But I had a boy on the weekend who's, who's a good player, but plays MPL 14s, 15s, or whatever. Had a very, very solid foundation, and then it was just small parts of that technique of each of them that were off. So some more than others. Uh, and it's just highlighting those and just making them aware of them. So it's simple things like instead of body twisting towards the ball when they're striking, they've got a habit of twisting away from the strike or arms not getting high enough high enough when they're stepping for the strike. So it means body's rotating on contact. So just little things like that to be aware of just to try to maximize those, um, those each of those techniques. And it's the same feedback that we give to the pros. It's that detail, detail, the smaller, smaller little adjustments that can make, make massive differences. Yeah. And do you give them like a program that comes with it or is it just... So, no, nah, so it's more they get a verbal feedback on the day then they get written feedback later in the week or, or once I can catch up to getting back onto them, we've done a yep. heap. Uh, and then from there, there's depending on what the deficiencies were, there's links to different um, drills that they need to be practicing at home and need to be working on. Yeah. But it's, it's been really good. So obviously a lot of people that train in here I've been able to work with and, and do the assessments on, but also lots of players that aren't from here that were just coming in for that one-off assessment, um, yeah. which is good. Like saying we know he's a good player, we just want to know what the, what the, what areas you need to work on or whatever they might be. And this is more often than not information they're not getting at their clubs, but which is understandable, obviously from a from a club point of view, they can't be given that detailed information to every single player. Yeah, we got twenty three players. Yeah, or maybe more. Yeah, or sixteen. Sixteen. I don't know who's got twenty three. I don't know the full squad. <laughs> um. Yes, yeah, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, so. so it's been good. Something new that we've added. Something that we'll look to build on, and then, um potentially start off with the same thing online for people that are too far away from from us to do it uh just figure out how that would look and how we can make it just want to provide a service that's beneficial you know what i mean so it's only ten dollars more than what a normal session costs here it gives you access to me and then obviously um just trying to help people just be aware of technically where they're off and because i think it's something we struggle with massively as a country yeah and is there something like you you text them back or instagram message them back when they have questions and stuff as well yeah, so it. we do that generally just if yeah. anybody does, but especially people that we work with. Yeah. But yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so we have a couple of questions um, from some players. Well, people now, especially now all the leagues are kind of suspended. Mm -hmm. um, is what's the most important thing to remember when, you know, practicing at home or what can we do now, yeah. you know, to maintain our fitness because they've gone through preseason, they've started the season, now it's no training, no games. Yeah. So what should they be doing to kind of maintain that fitness that they had pre-season mm -hmm. so the fitness element is going to be hard obviously because you're limited in what you can what you can do um so you can't get the game yeah game the fitness game. obviously you can't even get the training fitness from that so it's going to be on yourself so predominantly the only way or two or a couple of ways you're going to do that is obviously just running you know what i mean um which is an ideal which is great but at least it will give you a platform that you can build off from rather than not doing anything in this time and then going back in to do it and then it's just doing your own training trying to get as much touches on the ball for for both younger and older players they need to be getting touches on the ball obviously the younger ones more more so than the older ones the older ones would mix up more fitness with the the touches on the ball where the young ones predominantly should just be the touches on the ball so literally all you need if you're at home is you need a wall and a ball that's it yeah. and just practice playing the ball off the wall receiving it on different angles off bit um, both feet inside outside and just taking just just different touches and just making that we've got different drills maybe we can even link it to this video um, yeah. about things that they can be be doing at home but it's that and then especially just the ball mastery and dribbling so a lot of that the feedback that we're giving to players here when they're deficient with their passing and touching and their dribbling is it's just the drills on there we will link it into this video and just doing that so literally all you need at home you would need say a, a 10 meter area where you could just dribble up with that so say two meters by 10 meters or whatever would be plenty of space and you just need a wall with a ball and you, i mean a wall and a board a wall and a ball and you just need a couple of meters there that's all you need um and just do that. So we say that to players anyway. But literally, obviously, now in these these crazy times that we're living in, it's important that they keep ticking over, not only physically but also mentally as well. Get back on the ball and yeah, you don't want to kind of get depressed and yeah, miss it or get out of it and stop thinking about yeah. it. It's easy. Like um, I suppose yeah. it's the other thing. How do you stay motivated in kind of this this period of time? In this limbo, not knowing yeah. what's going on. You don't know when the league's going to be back. Um, yeah, and you don't know when you're going to be back at training. I suppose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, like I said, it's crazy, it's crazy times. But like we're still training at school. We haven't had any directive from the Department of Education to not train at school. Um, so players at sports high schools, I think, are still getting sessions. But how long that will continue, I don't know. Well, I suppose this is the other good thing about you know, training in here is just one-on-one -on -one contact. So you're not in big groups. Yeah. 
So you can still kind of train and not have to stress out if people are stressing out that much, which yeah. I don't think they should be. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Okay. Um, what are the traits for an attacking mid or winger? And we have Anthony as well, who can talk about his traits as well as a winger. Uh, this is where those uh, technical sessions come in play. Steve, you know, pulls me up all about my um, technique and what I should be doing. Um, just trying to set some good habits. So just always, you know, hips facing away from goal, touch never too narrow, always diagonally or a bit more wider. And um, yeah, just always looking to go towards goal. Believe in yourself, be confident and yeah. So like you're moving, like I suppose, what's your like job on the field? I think a lot of, especially young players, they probably don't assist, get that. Obviously. Yeah, but other than that, like and moving forward, like what what's your main like goals? Is obviously not to lose the ball and let someone behind just you. Just to create chances and. How do you do that though? Creating chances, just uh, I don't know, you got to be creative whilst moving forward and um, can't do anything dumb. You know, to lose the ball in the attacking third, you know, you're gonna try to keep it there instead of back back near your goal. You rather have it on their half and so on. Do you think you have to you have to be quick to be in those positions? No, not so really. It I don't. Helps. It does help, it's but I'm fast. more that. <laughs> Maybe first five <laughs> meters yeah, I got, but that's about it. From yeah. Exactly. Uh, yeah. So I'd say the the main attributes of wingers, obviously speed. The faster you are, speed is invaluable in this game, especially in the modern game. So Thanks, being man. Quick. Um, you reckon I got speed? You, you got speed of thought, <laughs> speed of technique. So, but the, the, that's yeah, the same that's, thing. I yeah, could be important. really, really fast, but I'm a slow thinker, so it doesn't do it. Or I could be moderately fast, or like normal speed, which is you. But I think faster than other players, so I'm able to create spaces and things like that. Um, obviously, it depends on the formation and things like that, and the roles that the coach wants you to play within those. So, some, for example, wingers, say in the four three three, expected to drop back in and come flat in midfield, or balls on the opposite side, they slide into the middle. So there's a lot of work there. Whereas other formations and other coaches just say stay forward, so they keep the three forward and just defend with everybody else. So just from that, there's no set. This is what you should do. This is what you should do. It depends on obviously whatever the the setup is of the coach or the club that you're at. Um, but the attributes that are key is uh, good one-on-ones. So you need to be able to dribble out people and go past people, which is something obviously that you do effectively. Um, be able to get in behind and understand when to come to the ball and when to go in behind. That's the first thing. First thought or should always be, can I get in behind? If I can't get in behind straight away, that's when I'm starting to check back for the ball. Um, needs to be able to cross, needs to be able to shoot, needs to be able to finish. Um, that'd be the key attributes, yeah. Size isn't as relevant for those things. So smaller players can, can thrive out wide and... So can taller players. There's no real set what it has to be there. Um, but, yeah. So you think one of the things you should be like practicing is your crossing and your passing? Crossing, and yes, yeah, so anyone that plays in wide areas should be working on their crossings. Even midfielders that play wider in midfield should be working on their crossing. But, yeah, it's more those 1v1 skills. So even if my crossing was deficient and my finishing wasn't amazing, if I can dribble at people and consistently beat people, which is, if you look at the modern game, how everything's set up and they're just, it's zonal. So there's no man for man really anywhere else, anywhere at the moment. So it's zonal. So if, I, if I'm if i able to beat a player that's there, that means somebody else has to come out of their zone to start the clean. And that's how we start to create, create space. space. But you yeah. see a lot, and especially in Australian football, we aren't good at beating that first defender and breaking them down. So we'll play in and we just play around people, never through, like play around teams, never through teams. So it's having that ability to, to get the ball face up, go at players. If you're good at that, the, the, then there's a chance you can play at a high level. Yeah. What about being, like that's a winger, but a 10, what's... Uh, tens, a tens that? different, yeah. yeah. So a tens more being able to receive in tight spaces, being able to find tight spaces, being able to find the space to then take the tight. So it's your awareness and it's your vision, which is vital into there. So you see, um, a lot of the, the the older tens didn't work very much defensively, but it, they made up for that obviously with what they brought to the table with the ball. So you need to be able to create. You need to be able to obviously have good distribution, and you need to be able to finish as well. Usually from deeper outside the box, but also within the box, you need to be able to do all those things. Plus, you need to be able to be a defender as well. Yeah, these and I suppose that s speed of thought as well is yep. critical in a, mm -hmm. in a central role. Yeah, hundred um, percent. But yeah, the 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 dribbling of the one on one stuff is important, but it's not as, as important as what it is obviously in those wide areas where you're one on one. In the middle, you're not really going to be one on one with somebody. You'll be in between players and in between yeah. lines. So it's about being able to either find those spaces to then get on the ball and, and then start to create things or find those spaces to drag defenders out, which will then space open space for other players. Yeah. Who's your favourite number 10? My favourite number 10? I don't even know. I don't really have a favourite number 10. Ever? You never looked up to one? Do you like? Uh, Dennis Depends, Burkhead? but... Like Baggio, when he played as a 10? 
Um, Maradona. But you like Baggio wherever he plays. I like Baggio wherever he plays. <laughs> it was one of my favourites. But Maradona, like they're the older, older style tens. I don't know who would be a ten now. It's like a Urzel. Let me say, like obviously De Bruyne and things Bruyne. like that. Yeah. Is he a ten though? Cause he's on favour. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I don't know. Who's your favourite winger? My favourite winger. <clears throat> Hazard favorite winger? No, definitely not Hazard I'll Mane. probably be up there Mane, no, not even Mane You, yeah Anthony Frangie Anthony Frangie um, Wingers from time from boy I don't even know Ronaldo Ronaldo Cristiano No <laughs> They always talk about Sane on, on FIFA or something like that. Sane? That's because he's quick Who about Sane? Oh, wait, no my Mane Sane. <laughs> I didn't speak about Sane, rate Sane Or Mane FIFA. Neither of those are in my FIFA team There you go No I don't mind Song. Song? Yeah, from Tottenham. Oh, Song. Please sing Song. song. I like, Alex Song is a... <laughs> sing a song. <laughs> is an eight. <laughs> Who's your favourite winger? Probably Ronaldo, eh? Yeah. Or Mbappe. I don't mind him. Mbappe? Yeah. Try Just to play like him, but don't have the speed. Or the skills. Like exactly. Mbappe or Ronaldo? <laughs> Both. He's trying to do like a hybrid Ronaldo. <laughs> Mbappe. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've seen you like dive and stuff like Ronaldo so don't dive at all when you, when you can't run anymore you just throw yourself I was watching the, I turned over to the game the other day and I know just as I turned over he's on the floor <laughs> and I was going to myself you better get up <laughs> you've got to work tomorrow bro I don't need to pull anything get up I got up all good and sound now thought I'd break a teeth it's all good did that do that to your lip? exactly yes <laughs> bit my lip. <coughs> you bit your lip. <laughs> bit my lip. Yeah. Who's your favorite ten? Ten, ten, ten. Oh. I did like Ozil at Real Madrid. No, you know he's not that type of player anymore. Oh, he used to, when he first joined Arsenal, he was. He's nineteen assists, like half a season. Mm. Just because he's Arsenal, that's why. Probably. Yeah. Not I'm not Bruno Fernandez. He, that's for him as a 10. We've barely seen the guy play, so I don't know how you don't mind. Player of the month, apparently. <laughs> really? Player After what, one you're game? player of the month. <laughs> I suppose because United actually won a game. So. you got a man of the match, like five five games in a row or something. Has he only played like two United games? Yeah, that's not that hard. <laughs> okay. Okay. When you guys win a title, let us know. <laughs> what we just did. Most I don't successful. Know. I don't, I don't know what's happening. I don't know what's happening. I don't know what's happening. Happen. Void. It's not going to get void. The people that say that. The only petty men united <laughs> people. In that. It's going to get void. Gonna, they don't deserve it. They didn't win all the games. Shut up. Exactly. <laughs> they still have enough points to not even play and still win the league. Wait and see. Well, it's actually. It only needs to come back to for one round and you win the title. Nah, but they said it's. The, in the, the law book or whatever it's 75% of the games has to be played um, and 75% of the games what was it it was like 27.5 or something we played 28 yeah so that's it yeah. it's not void not guaranteed it literally <laughs> I will, I'll wait for that day to come and that and day United comes United I'll come on the pod and I'll say the interesting thing is going to be if that did happen what happens with the relegation Champions League spot I think they're going to find a solution I think, I think this is going to play. Yeah. It'll come back April and they're like, yeah, it's all right, we'll do it behind closed behind doors. Closed doors yeah. If the players test positive to it, they can't play. If yeah. they don't, they can play. Yeah. We'll yeah. bang out, you know, what is it? 15, there's 10 games. It's not even. Th- it's not. No, it's not it's even. Eight games. So it's been like it eight. three sure games per eight. week. And you needed two more wins. No, they didn't. No, this needs a, a round to happen. Because yeah. I think even this last weekend, if... No, two. If the City played Arsenal and... Burnley, I think it was, and they didn't win both those, and it was all over. Oh, okay. That's why it could be done before us playing again. Yeah. What about you, Ali? Who's your favourite 10? My favourite 10 is Dennis Burkamp. Okay. Hmm? I was a fan of Burkamp. I was around that. Yeah. Oh, I was too I young. I playing real life, too. That was the moment. No, that would have been... I've seen your Arsenal team. It's only a Premier League game I've ever seen. Well, which, which year was that? Oh, it was, oh, what was it? I was 15, so... 98... Oh wow! Maybe so. It so was Highbury. Petit. No, nah, I play, we, they played Nottingham Forest. Ah, okay. So I played watching the North uh, Forest game, but it was Petit, Burkamp, Overmars, Overmars, like oh, everyone so that came. Yeah, 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 it was too. unbelievable. Yeah, 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 Tony Adams in the back. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah that's the only Premier League game we've been to, and that's the game I've seen. Was that when Nottingham had that Pierre Van Hooydonk up front? I can't the Dutch guy. I think they got pumped. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
No, the Birkin was quality. What about the winger? Mm. Is he a favourite winger? No, well, Thierry Henry started off as a winger and went back to being a winger at Barcelona. It's true. Um, it's not bad. But he's my favourite player oh, all no. around. Yeah. I like it really well. Thierry is his class. <laughs> I've got two signed balls by Thierry Henry. Yeah? Yeah. Where are those balls Where'd now? You get, where'd you get them from? <laughs> um, my brother's friend, he works at Sky. Mm -hmm. And he was working at Sky for a while. Mm -hmm. so he Did got you get the authentication? No, he took a photo when he got the thing. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. yeah. But Gosh. when he was there, he got him to sign it. Because he's like, the staff can get stuff signed by. Yeah. It's like a lot of the guests and stuff. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, one day he just went and he messaged my brother and said, I know your brother's a big fan. Yeah. And he went and bought two footballs and no, got him to sign it. Imagine that. So it was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was one to me and one to my son. So Yeah, wow. Well. It was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Pretty special moment. It is. Yeah. You weren't even there. I wasn't even there. <laughs> I didn't even get to meet him. Yeah. That's not a bad one either. Sign jersey, Wanderers jersey. Decent. We're going to auction that off. I'm cheap. Yeah. Start a dollar. <laughs> Sold. <laughs> no, that's from a couple of years ago, that one. Who's on that? Who's the 33? I don't know. I know Abe's on this. Is somewhere. that a 33 or is that somewhere a signature that looks like? Abe's got a little smiley, smiley faces. Ah, oh, so that is Abe. No, Abe's not 33. I think he's 48. 48. I don't know, man. What else? What's next? Another one was, is there much focus on young goalkeepers or the goalkeeping training or stuff like that? You don't really see too much of it, especially at a young age. It's not like the teams have goalkeeper coaches. Uh, clubs so do. You, so, like, there's... Like, even, like, uh, on the, like, 15s, mm. and, yeah? Yeah, yeah, clubs have either coaches at their clubs or, play, like, places that they send their goalkeepers to oh, okay. to go do the training. So, that's not unusual. Um, it's not a big focus, obviously. I know as a coach, when you're playing things and that sometimes I forget to put the keeper on the board when I'm putting the team up but um, it's not a big focus there should be more obviously they're a vital part of the game uh, but I think they're involved in most sessions and the work that they do with their feet now I think especially now still like, vital. Know, want them play out the back 100% be so you still play. see uh, a lot of the keepers are behind with their feet yeah. to the other players um, what do you think of Adrian yeah next question <laughs> but even that like I'm not even that bothered like yeah. As a Liverpool fan, obviously you don't want to lose. You want to win as many games. But like, what do you do with, the, with that game? We lose because of that, and then uh, yeah. we just couldn't put. No, that. But, but the thought behind his pass, like, it's just it for any goalkeeper, I've seen Bert Leno do it against Olympiacos. He did put the same your foot shit through the ball and get as yeah. far away from your goal. But it's as like you it's can. been coached out of them. Like yeah. you have to pass because again, I, I think you need one of those technical analysis. To be fair, <laughs> on Adrian, go Adrian. Oh, wow. You can hit up Steve at first phase. <laughs> Tag you in. I will Tag do it. Uh, yeah, it was but shambles, man. But, but that happens at that level. Stuff. Hey? But the goalkeeping, that like coaching, is just not enough focus on it? Or do you think it's just evolving now where they're kind of... Not too I think the demands right of a goalkeeper has changed within the last 10, probably more years. Because um, how do you teach a player to dive? Like, you don't want them constantly diving. They damage their But you don't know. Like, something. that's when I've been around yeah. the game since I was three years old. I have no idea what a goalkeeper... I think they're supposed to dive forward. I think they are. Yeah. Like, I think that's what the, the coaching points are. They're supposed to die. I don't know. I'm not a goalkeeper, so I don't pretend to be. Um, yeah. So it's hard. And that's like, I'm around football every day. Some of these coaches are only around at football when they get to training or whatever. Yeah. So I don't know how the kids are taught. Um, but obviously, the feedback I give my keepers is about their feet predominantly. Yeah. Yeah. And decision making. Yeah. What's the, what's the biggest strength, I suppose, in a modern day goalkeeper? I'm not a defender has to have now. A modern day defender? Yeah. Like a centre back. Now you've got. A goalkeeper that plays out, you yeah. kind of have to play wide. A good long ball and someone that can drive down the middle at times when good they see it ball. open. In, in the modern game, you got to have a good long ball. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> Hit the which, channels, which get it in the mixer. <laughs> in the modern game, like back in the day, yeah, it was play it long. Mm -hmm. But now it's different. It's like you have to be a, a they need six. To, they need to be athlete, athlete, athletes. They're like big, fast, strong. Um, you need to be able to bully the players that they're against. So that's just the physical attributes. But technically, they need to be good on the ball. They need to be comfortable on the ball. They'll, I think they take more touches in a game than what anybody else does in the modern game now. So obviously, they need to be comfortable. Distribution needs to be good. With that, the awareness needs to be good to see lines opening that they're yeah. able before they receive to punch those balls through. And then that 
that creates uh, uh, next the next harder challenge where you're playing between lines. You're not playing around players or whatever. You're playing through lines. You need to get the weight of the pass right, play to the correct foot, play to the safe side away from the defender. There's lots that they need to do, but then obviously they need to be able to read the game. 1v1 defending, they need to be good. Then they need to know how to work with another defender. They need to read the game, when to drop off, when to come forward. There's, there's a lot There's a lot to do with the centre-back. And those decisions are crucial. If I step when I should have stayed, then we're in danger. If I stayed when I should have stepped, then we're in danger. Whereas if you look at anywhere else across the field, um, you've got more room for error. So if a 10 should have stepped and didn't step, there's then there's still place to recover. But if yeah. centre-back doesn't, even if a full-back gets it wrong, there's still centre-back to cover usually. Yeah. But a centre-back gets it wrong, the other one, so the centre-back's too far away, then you're in trouble. Like you see it so often, a centre-back will be playing out, plays the ball to the striker and they score. Yeah. Especially in the younger age group, which is fine. Um, but they need to learn it. But, yeah, there's a lot that goes into it. So yeah. It's not just really the tall, the biggest kid that has to be there, whatever, like it used to be, and they need to be able to head and kick it long. It, there's a lot. It's evolved a lot more, especially if you want to be a team that keeps possession and builds up the play, then that's where it starts. Starts with your goalkeeper and then starts with your centre-backs. Yeah, well, they build it from the... Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, the goalkeeper. Yeah, um, yeah. It was. I think reading was it. Arsene Wenger once said, you know, one of your most important players is your goalkeeper. Yeah. So you have to, you know, because he's the one that's going to distribute the ball. Yeah. Well, you look at the game. result in that Champions League game, Liverpool and Atletico. The goalkeeper was the thing that made the difference. Yeah, massively. Yeah. Massively. Yeah. That was FIFA stats. I was raging about having to be on FIFA. 30 something shots to however many. It was really ridiculous. Ridiculous. Just, uh, just every time they got, and even like when Milner came on, he kept getting in the box, cutting the ball back. And yeah. Like, where's the goals? Mm -hmm. But they did kind of park themselves right in there. But to still, make it like difficult. I said, if Oblak doesn't have the game that he had, that, that, that wasn't effective and that didn't work. Everyone thinks Simeone's a, a world class tactician nah. because of what he did. He shouldn't have won that game. There's no way in the world. If Adrian doesn't do that, then Liverpool win that game. Yeah, well, when I was watching it, I was just like, there's goal coming. It's yeah. coming. Like you can't, you know, sustain that amount of pressure yeah. for that long. Yeah. So it's not like you, you're sitting deep, but you're not allowing chances. They were allowing no. chances. They were allowing opportunities. Mate, they just couldn't Liverpool couldn't score. This has been a problem of the season. That's Champions League for you, I guess. What Cut would you know about the Champions League? When was the last time Man United were in the Champions League? Get out of here. <laughs> Tell us about the Europa League. How's that going for you? Not bad. It's all right? No. A Galo scored, huh? Yeah. Bomb. What was that meme? Did you see the other week? No. How it goes, Manchester United are going to stand in solidarity with their brothers from Manchester City, so we too will not be playing in the Champions League <laughs> next year. <laughs> it's a good stance to take, right? Oh, yeah, support yeah, your brothers. Good support the English teams, mm -hmm. even though they're your biggest rival. You must have been happy when they beat City, though. I was over the moon. Did you watch the game? No. No, I didn't think you did. It's early in the morning. I get off my phone when I wake up to see the score. Can you just wait, wake up? Like, when I want to watch a game and it's two in the morning, I won't look at the score and when I wake up, I'll watch the, watch the game. Play. Yeah. It's on, on your fingertips, man. Highlights, YouTube, Man City, Man United. That's why Highlights. Mane is your favourite 10. Because <laughs> yeah, you've yes. never seen him play. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you've just seen him on FIFA. What's the stats? 88? All right, I'll put him on. Exactly. You up front. <laughs> <laughs> he's got Lewandowski as a centre back because he's ninety. Mm -hmm. He's got some good strength, to be fair. Yeah, no, that's it. That's it. That's it. Um, quick pod, mm -hmm. informative pod, I suppose, okay. for training. Yeah. Um, and again, guys, hit up Steve if you want that, you mm -hmm. know, technical assessment. And if you've got games as well, as well, Steve does game analysis Yeah, we're starting to do that video analysis as well. Yeah, and he'll give you feedback on your performances and, you know, cut up the video and show you what you've done right and wrong and mm -hmm. take you through it. But, yeah, keep practicing, keep training. Awesome. Um, and we'll hopefully... See you next week. Yeah, see you next week. Hopefully you guys are playing soon. Right. See you guys. See ya. Bye.